<laughs> getting tired. You know, two of the biggest messages that I try to communicate to people are, one, do you really want to know? And then two, hear God's voice. Because if you ever hear God speak to you, you'll never be the same. I mean, you may not do what he says, and you may not follow through, but you'll never be able to deny the fact that you heard God speak. It will always be something that will stick with you and it will change your life for the rest of your life. It's always something that you should keep with you, but you should pursue that because that is our ultimate goal is to know Jesus. And once knowing Jesus is to know the Father. And in so knowing both of them is to have that fellowship, that communion, that oneness with God that Jesus promised we were to have. The closer that you draw to God, it's like a triangle, the closer you will draw to other people. As you get close to God, you'll begin to discover that you have a love for other people. You'll have a love even for the sinner. Because as much as you are able to hate someone, that's how far away you are from God. If you're able to pick a group of people, or you're able to separate yourself from the church or from the body of Christians, or you're able to somehow delegate your feelings away from those with which God has created, then that also determines how far you really are from God. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If it so be that God would give his son, then how much more so should you likewise have the same attitude as the Father? So as you get closer to God, the more you begin to love not just the brethren, but you love the world, the people. You have compassion, you have mercy, you have kindness, you have gentleness. The attitude you have to have is to get to God with all you're getting, to get as close as you can to Him so that you would be in fellowship and in communion with your brethren. Because if you're not, then you're really not close to God. The two are inseparable. That is the triangle principle. That's the basic premise that Jesus said. You know, if you say you love me, why don't you keep my commandments? My commandments are simple. You know, love your enemies, bless those who persecute you, miserably despitefully use you. All those things that Jesus said. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, that's the point. If you love him. You don't have to keep his commandments. Of course not. Saved by grace, you know, if the Lord knows you on that day that you stand before him, then praise the Lord, you're saved. But pursuing God and that pursuit of being close to him is the realization of why I tell people, you need to go after that. You need to develop that in your relationship. It needs to be the utmost, and you need to cling to that and go after it with everything that you got. And then the other one is, do you really want to know? It's like nine times out of ten, most people have an opinion when they ask a question. They don't want to know the truth. Because often the facts of being a Christian, when I ask that question, I'm asking the same thing that Jesus in his own statement said, wisdom is justified of his children of her children and he was saying that in a negative way to the people that were hearing it because he said that look if wisdom is justified to her children stupid is as stupid does would be the same way of an analogy of that same scriptural application of how he was using it at the time that he spoke it because on the one hand it's true wisdom is justified to her children that if you're wise and you are children of wisdom then you are wise but if you're stupid then you know you're a child of wisdom but you're not necessarily a child of that kind of wisdom. You're just stupid. <laughs> so, a lot of times you have to sit down and ask yourself, just where and what do you want to be? You know, How do you, far do you want to go with God? Do you really want to know? Do you really want to know Him? Do you really want to follow Him? Do you really want to become closer to Him than you've ever known before? Because the closer you get to Him, the more you'll love, the more you'll feel loved, and the more you'll appreciate love among others the more you'll become compassionate and tender-hearted, the more you'll become merciful, the more you'll become kind. At the same time, the more you'll be able to be hurt, the more you'll be able to be kind of like pricked inside, you know, the more you'll have kind of that eh, the more that you'll not want to, you know, be involved in the world and the things of the world, the more you'll want to be with God. Neck or nothing. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisherman's coat about him and did cast himself into the sea. John 21, 7. 
Have you ever had a crisis in which you deliberately and emphatically and recklessly abandoned everything? Have you? It is a crisis of will. You may come up to it many times externally, but it amounts to nothing. The real deep crisis of abandonment is reached internally, not externally. You've already decided inside whether you will or you won't. The real deep crisis of abandonment is reached internally, not externally. The giving up of external things may be an indication of being in total bondage. Have you deliberately committed your will to Jesus Christ? In other words, not for the external things that you gave away as a show, but in your heart of hearts, are you doing what God said to do? And the easiest way to ask you that when you're dealing with utmost is to ask yourself, have I asked God what he wants me to do today? And am I doing what God told me to do today? Because you see, in asking, you would keep asking until you received. And in receiving, then you would do as you were told. That is the not just obedience, but that is relationship. That is the utmost of our uttermost given to that personal relationship that we have with God, that we know that we are in communion with him because he has told us where to go, what to do, how to say it. And in, throughout the day, as we walk in that way, then he guides us through the day. And we begin to have, as it were, an exciting experience of God throughout the day to see his hand guiding and abiding with us as he directs us and reveals to us the way we should go and walks with us in that way. So we would have communion with him, fellowship, oneness, echad. If you allow emotion first, you will never make the transaction. In other words, have you deliberately committed your will to Jesus Christ? It's a transaction of will and not of emotion. The emotion is simply the guilt edge of the transaction. <laughs> emotion influences that with which you have already made the decision. So either guilty for doing or non-guilt for not doing. <laughs> that didn't come out right. Guilty for not doing and joyful for doing or having done. If you allow emotion first, you will never make the transaction. Do not ask God what the transaction is to be, but make it in regard to the thing you do see, either in the shallow or the profound place. Literally every day, as you walk in your way, make sure that you do it, what God says to do, according to His will and not your will. Because in everything, we can start off on a good foot, the right foot, and then suddenly take two steps and tremble and stumble and fall flat on our face. We need to start back again with the Lord and walk with Him in His timing and His will and His way throughout our day. Then, in whatever comes our way, we're able to ask Him for wisdom according to whatever choices that He wants us to make. And we can seek those choices. And we can make our life actually a, a living testimony of Him living in us as we follow His will as He chooses to reveal it to us every day, every moment of the day. If you have heard Jesus Christ's voice on the billows, let your convictions go to the winds and let your consistency go to the winds, but maintain your relationship to Him. In other words, it does not matter what the transaction is. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what you think. What matters is what God said. What has God said to you? That is always the criteria with which we ask ourselves every single day that we're alive. What did God tell me to do? Now, what did God tell someone else to do? But what did God tell me to do? And then, of course... The next question is, am I doing it? So ask yourself, are you?